Hello everyone, this is H2Acon here from Online Nights, and I'm here today with another episode of Character Case Files. This episode I'm going to be covering yet another request. Since last episode we looked at one of the UNSC's past heroes, this time round we're going to look at a character who looks set to become one of their future greats. Let's take a look at the story so far of Captain Thomas Lasky. Lasky was born on August 15, 2510 on Mars, though he later grew up on the colony world New Harmony. His mother was a colonel in the UNSC and was frequently away during Thomas's childhood. He also had an older brother, Cadman. Coming from a military family, in 2525 Lasky followed his brother into the Corbulo Academy of Military Science on Sarcinius IV. During training he failed to display the same excellence as his elder brother and was frequently reminded of this by his superiors. As well as his poor performances, Lasky became unpopular at the academy due to his support of colonial self-rule. Condemned as an insurrectionist sympathizer by the other cadets, several of whom had lost family to the war, Lasky had few friends and spent much of his free time in video calls with his brother. Cadman had graduated from the academy and gone on to join the ODSTs, however he was later killed in an insurrectionist ambush on the colony world Andesia, leaving Thomas even more alone. During his first year of training, Lasky was diagnosed with an allergy to cytoprethylene, one of the chemicals used in cryogenic suspension. This was considered as grounds to qualify him as being medically unfit for active service, and so, knowing that he disliked the academy, he was given the option to use his allergy as a ticket out of the UNSC. Before his discharge paperwork can be completed, however, Sosinius IV was attacked by the Covenant. Local UNSC forces were quickly overwhelmed, and the bulk of the cadets were massacred when they were all attacked at the evacuation point. Lasky and several of his squadmates were able to escape and take refuge in the armory, where they were discovered later by Spartan II, John 117. John 117 and Blue Team had been assigned to a search and rescue operation, finding and extracting any survivors from the academy. After finding Lasky and his squad, he helped arm them, and then covered them so they could get to a warthog and drive away from the campus. Driving through the nearby forest, the warthog was ambushed by Kigyar and rendered inoperable. The cadets were forced to continue on foot, whilst John 117 stayed behind to fight a rearguard action against a pair of Megaleklo that were pursuing them. Lasky's friend and fellow cadet Kyla Silva had been hit by a needle around in the ambush, and later bled out during their trek through the forest. The two cadets had began to develop a romantic relationship, and her death weighed heavily on Lasky. When John 117 returned, having only brought down one of the hunters, Lasky volunteered to act as a decoy to help the Spartan kill the second of the pair. He came mere inches away from fatal plasma burns, but gave John the opening he needed to eliminate the alien with a grenade. With the area cleared of hostiles, a Pelican dropship was able to land and safely extract Lasky and the other surviving cadets. Inspired by the Master Chief's words of praise for his bravery, Lasky chose to remain in the UNSC despite his condition, and so he spent the next two and a half decades fighting in the Human Covenant War. During the course of the war, Lasky steadily rose through the ranks of the Navy, and by the end of the conflict, he held the rank of Commander. Around about 2550, the UNSC had commissioned a new vessel, a supercruiser that incorporated prototypes of several reverse-engineered Covenant and Forerunner technologies. This warship, which received the designation of the UNSC Infinity, was constructed in secret in the Oort Cloud, a sphere of icy planetoids surrounding the Sol system. By the time the war was over and an official ceasefire of hostilities declared in 2553, the Infinity had still not yet been completed. Construction of the ship was continued nonetheless, and the vessel was battle ready a few months later. Captain Andrew Del Rio was given command of the cruiser, with Captain Lasky serving as the executive officer, the second in command. Whilst the finishing touches to the ship were being finalised, the existence of the nearly completed Infinity was discovered by an insurrectionist group known as the New Colonial Alliance. A woman named Ilsa Zane led a cell of the NCA in a daring raid to seize control of the Infinity. After sneaking aboard the ship disguised as a construction crew, they took Captain Del Rio hostage and used him to get onto the bridge. Once there, they locked away the bridge crew and disabled the ship's AI, giving them full control of the cruiser. Zane then used the ship's PA system to announce their presence and warn the crew that any attempts to retake the bridge would result in her venting the ship's atmosphere, killing everyone on board. Lasky had been giving a fire team of Spartan 4s a tour of their future posting and was with the five of them on the Spartan deck when Zane's announcement came through. He helped the Spartans access the armor base to suit up and the group then began making their way towards the bridge. They were spotted on security cameras by Zane's henchmen and she gave the order to depressurize S deck, catching them by surprise. Lasky was caught by Spartan Palmer before he could be sucked out of the vessel and then he quickly put on an emergency oxygen mask from a nearby locker. 
Lasky was then able to get to a terminal and enter the Infinity's lockdown codes, and so this served to prevent Zane from venting any more decks. The group then split up, with Spartans Palmer and Davis scaling the outside of the hull to get up to the bridge, and Lasky remaining on S deck with the other Spartans. A group of insurrectionists had gone down to sweep the deck for survivors, and so they attacked Lasky and the others when they found them. Whilst being shielded by Spartan Holst, Lasky was able to seal the bulkheads around the innies, trapping them and eliminating them as a threat. Meanwhile, Palmer and Davis had been able to retake the bridge, and so the Infinity was now once again back under UNSC control. Lasky then served under Captain Del Rio for the next four years, up until the events of Halo 4 in 2557. Following the Infinity's return from Requiem without having dealt with the Didact, Del Rio was relieved of duty, and Lasky made acting captain. After the pivotal role that he played shortly after in the destruction of the Mantle's approach above New Phoenix, this captaincy was made official. As captain, he then led the Infinity on its return to Requiem six months later to secure the constructs for research purposes. It was this expedition that formed the basis of Halo 4's Spartan Ops. Shortly after the Infinity's return from Requiem, Lasky was called in to appear before the UNSC High Command to explain several perceived failures on his part, the escape of Dr. Catherine Halsey and the destruction of the Shield World chief among them. Fortunately for Lasky, he was able to retain his position in command of the Infinity, thanks to the testimony of Commander Sarah Palmer, who stretched the facts to cover for him. Lasky was later asked to serve as Admiral Terence Hood's aide at a peace summit between Humanity, the Sanghili, and the Jiral Harney. The aim of the meeting was to address the rising tension between the Jiral Harney and Sanghili, with Humanity present to mediate between the two. The three species agreed to meet at the neutral planet of Aeland 4. The conference was soon interrupted by Covenant Remnant forces that had somehow learned of its location. The Spartan fours on security detail were able to overpower the initial ambushes, however the delegation's shuttle had been destroyed, stranding them groundside. The party then split up, with Commander Palmer and the bulk of the Spartans escorting Hood and the other VIPs, the Arbiter and the Jill Harnig Chieftain Lydus, to a defensive redoubt. Meanwhile, Lasky and Spartan 4 Naya Ray set about disabling the communications jammer, preventing them from contacting the Infinity for help. The pair were successful in restoring communications and alerting the Infinity, however enemy forces were bearing down on the redoubt, which the other group had now arrived at, too fast for the cruiser to get to in time. Lasky was forced to order Spartan Paul DeMarco to remain behind and cover their escape with an anti-aircraft battery, whilst the others fled the planet in an old tug vessel they'd discovered. DeMarco died doing so, causing Spartan Palmer to feel resentment towards Lasky for having given the fatal order. Following the incident on Aeland 4, Admiral Hood assigned Lasky to carry out a covert investigation to try and find out the identity of the mole that had leaked the location of the summit. Accompanied by Spartan Ray, his investigation took him to Outer Colony World Escala 3, where he met with a journalist named Petra Janikek. Janikek was known for her extensive contact network and ability to uncover stories, However, she was also a childhood friend of Lasky's. The two came to an agreement, Jean Keck agreeing to use her contacts to aid Lasky's investigation in exchange for him providing her with an interview with the Master Chief. The agreement made, she later took him to visit one of her informants on Caravar, a Sanghili colony world. The contact, a Sanghili information broker known as Zeph Trial, provided Lasky with the name of the UNSC mole, Captain Daniel Clayton. Clayton was on the staff of Rear Admiral Horatio Temkin, one of the organisers of the peace talks, and so one of the few who had known of its location. Lasky hurried back to the Infinity with this information, however he arrived late to the party, as Clayton had already been apprehended 72 hours earlier. As of 2558, Thomas Lasky remains the captain of the UNSC Infinity, and therefore at the forefront of humanity's charge to dominance in the galaxy. Despite early doubts as to his ability, he has proven himself time and time again to be one of the UNSC's next generation of heroes. We can be sure that we'll be seeing Lasky again sometime, whether in the books or the games, and he'll certainly continue to shine. That's all for this episode, I hope you've enjoyed it, and please leave any suggestions for other characters you'd like me to cover in the comments down below. Please like, comment and subscribe for more, I've been H. Wakeman from Online Nights, and I'll see you next time on Character Case Files.